what is it that we need as we replenish and whether that's every day or on the weekend or on vacation, starting to check in with our own energy is something I don't think we do enough of and something I would encourage people to think about. And the other thing I was going to say, Jamie, you mentioned little things and I, I actually got this from my oldest son and is he's he's gotten super big into sort of this healthy lifestyle and he's he's a triathlete and I it's humbling whether your kids are young or older just like how much you learn from them right but he was so big on drinking enough water every day and so he kept talking to me about this and he he was he does like a gallon of water a day and when he first started talking to me about this it was a few years ago, maybe three or four years ago, but I'm like, I can't do that. Not at my age. Like that would be unhealthy. Right. And he kept gently pushing me. I finally sat down and really did the research. And, you know, it's you, you can, what I've read, I don't take this as medical advice, but what I've read, like you can drink up to about 32 ounces in an hour and not run into issues with, you know, the salt level and whatever that dangerous condition is that when you have too much water, but you can drink lots of water. And so it's been probably at least two years now that I drink a gallon of water a day. And it's not actually, it's not, I don't even think about it anymore. You know, I get up and I drink my first 32 ounces before I do my morning routine. And I come back and I drink another before I get started with work. And then, then I'm halfway there already. And then through the rest of the day, I'm just drinking like 12, 16 ounces. And I don't think about it. But in the, in the beginning, like I had to track it and I had to really be very intentional. And I had to really focus on that. That's what my son is always saying. He said, that's what he tells people all the time. That's the one thing that you can do that's so easy and makes such a huge difference on your energy level. And um, I took a drink of water, we were talking, right? So I'm guessing your listeners might be a little thirsty as they're listening to this. And here's the one piece of advice I would give is that as we start thinking about increasing our water, which I totally agree with, uh, make sure you do it slowly. Uh, I, I yes. recommend figure out where you are on average, figure out where yeah. you want to be. And then only increase by about eight ounces every yes. five days because yes. the body needs that homeostasis and what happens is people yes. try to increase their water too fast and then they're in the bathroom and that yes. is we got to give the body time to adjust so for yes. those people that are like i'm thirsty absolutely right now, water, that's yes. my one piece of advice yes. is slowly and gently and that that actually i'm glad you brought that up because i'm remembering actually that was i tried like two or three times when he was telling me about this and that's exactly what i did i went like full on and i'm like i can't do this i'm going to the bathroom constantly it's uncomfortable it doesn't feel good you know and so then i would i would quit and i'm like yeah i can't do that and then i go back to the what many people in phoenix just walk around dehydrated all the time right and that's actually i kind of on my own kind of discovered what you just said. It's like, I need to do this incrementally. That's what I was going to say. I was, I was um, thinking about how you talked about increasing mindfulness. So that's, or meditation practice to mm -hmm. increase cancer mindfulness and, and how hard that is because so many people, myself included, by the way, jump into the deep end where you're like, all right, 30 minutes, this oh, is yes. what I have to do. And then it doesn't mm -hmm. work out. And my personal mm -hmm. experience is I get very anxious just sitting there yes. and then I'm counting mm -hmm. the time and I'm looking, but a lot of changes like that where, you know, we want to make these ch big changes because we want to see big results, but it yes. actually takes quite a long time. To yes. I, I always ask people when I'm talking about meditation and I'll ask. How many people in the room are runners? And you know, I'll have a couple people raise their hand. I'm like, okay, I, I have a question for you. If I had never run a day in my life, how would you help me start running to get to run a marathon? And people always say, well, you start slowly and you run a little bit and run a quarter mile and then you walk and then you know, that's how you, you do this. And I'm like, great, okay. So I don't go run a mile the first day I go out there and they're like, oh my gosh, no. And I said, okay, now let's apply that to meditation because many people will start with a half an hour, which is like running a marathon. And we wonder why we don't wanna do it the next day. And so really as people start a meditation practice, I encourage people to start one minute, even three times a week and then grow from there. Because yeah. habits don't form in the way that we sometimes assume they do. And people will start in that meditation space with 30 minutes. And then I often see people have a perception that you're either good or bad at meditation, which is completely incorrect. 
Um, and then unfortunately people get into a cycle of self abuse in their head at the same time, right? Where they're like, I'm terrible at this. I can't do this. This is mm -hmm. so hard. And so I encourage people to have, you know, that compassion, that kindness as they start a practice like that mm -hmm. and really think about just like we would think about starting to run one small step at a time. And you can apply this metaphor to water. You can apply mm -hmm. it to running. You can apply it to meditation. But the truth is we just need to apply it to life 